And hello there, folks. This is a rare instance of me covering something newsworthy like I used to. Normally, I wouldn't because I've retired the Monastery Gazette, but this was one of those situations where I felt I had to talk about it. And since the purported biggest <laughs> um, He-Man and She-Ra fans aren't talking about it, well, it falls to little old me to fill in the gaps. So, this came to my attention a few days ago, that as you're reading on the title, and this is coming from Dicebreaker, and I will link a archive version in the description because Dicebreaker is the Kotaku of tabletop gaming. Cortex has indefinitely paused development on He-Man RPG Legends of Grayskull after sale to Direwolf Digital. And for me, at least, this was a disappointment. I do remember covering how, covering a few years ago when this got announced that I was very enthusiastic about the idea of He-Man using Cortex Prime's rule set, especially since it also meant that the, uh, that what, what, what some would consider the obvious answer of using D&D 5th Edition was not taken, and truth be told, using D&D 5th Edition for He-Man would be an absolute disaster. But anyway, let's get into it. Tabletop Studio Cortex Roleplaying has reportedly stopped development on Legends of Grayskull Masters of the Universe Tabletop RPG as a consequence of former parent company Fandom selling Cortex to Dire Wolf Digital. A Fandom spokesperson told Dicebreaker via email that the process of transferring ownership between the two companies meant the Cortex team did not have the resources to work actively on Legends of Grayskull and fit a release that had already been delayed beyond its original 2021 timeline. The announcement video for the RPG has been privated, though a sign-up page still exists on a website dedicated to the now-defunct game. It's dead. <laughs> it's been shot in the back of the head twice. The old Soviet method. And that is very disappointing, but I can kind of see the logic. After all, as it, as it will be pointed out in a moment, um, the, plan, the plan is to allocate its time and resources into the Tales of Zadia expansions. And from a outside, very broad, very I-have-no-idea-what-I'm-doing kind of look, I can see why Tales of Zadia would be prioritized, because, well, for one, the core book's already out, and two, I get the feeling somebody would ask the question of why are we double-dipping into two fantasy series. I know one could argue that He-Man is straddling the line between science fiction and fantasy, but from a first-glance outside perspective, it's going to look as, as if it's fantasy. Comic book fantasy, but still fantasy. But going going on, it says, while the spokesperson did not permanently shut the door on the future where the players might abide, da 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 da, da never say never. They told Dicebreaker Cortex choosing to alloc allocate his resources on the Sunfire Chronicle, which honestly sounds like a adventure collection, and I don't do that. But I could be wrong on that situation. Now, new owner goes on. New owner Dire Wolf Digital, which handles the Dune Imperium and the Clank series. Dune Imperium, not to be confused with Chronicles of the Imperium, which is one of the uh, or Adventures of the Imperium, the two examples of role-playing games. One of them won't break the bank as much, and the Clank series, which is like league and board game form, alongside several well-regarded PC and console versions of board games. Also apparently found itself facing too many new projects to shoulder a to shoulder that kind of burden, da da da. No other projects of Cortex or Direwolf Digital are were affected by the sale, according to the spokesperson. Fandom apparently considered the sale of Cortex at the same time that it sold D D Beyond to Hasbro. Yada yada. Everybody knows about the D D Beyond sale, that's been quite a while, and the rest of it is just drivel that you would expect to see from a pre from a press release. The ones that I don't read, um, even though even when I get them. So, one of the obvious questions that that could come of this is, why? 
Why'd they kill this off when He-Man is going to have a bigger footprint as far as name recognition as opposed to the Dragon Prince, which is what Tales of Zadia is based on? I do have a few theories. Um, one of them is the fact that as a lot of people have learned the hard way, having a popular IP in tabletop form does not guarantee you're going to bring people into it. Marvel learned this the hard way in the early 2000s with Marvel Universe when they tried to actually think they could compete with the recently released D&D 3rd Edition. And even worse, try and compete with a diceless game, which are already hard sells as it is. I know so some people don't even consider them role-playing games. I don't agree with that, but you can certainly have that mindset. But there is one other really big problem that I don't think a lot of people are talking about. And that is the fact that, for whatever reason, fandom did not put... Cortex Prime, the flagship for this particular series, or Tales of Zadia, on a s accessible storefront like Drive Through RPG, or something t like that. Instead, they gave it its own site, which is very difficult to navigate. I will add, to integrate a almost wiki-like index for the game that is kind of pointless. Because the question that a lot of people had when looking at their site was, am I buying just a digital index or am I buying the actual PDF? Lord knows I had that issue on multiple occasions where it almost seemed like it didn't remember that I bought the game. Now, I did, I did, and I still have my PDFs, but that just shows the issue. One of the things that will always trigger me is bad navigation on websites, and Fandom's Cortex website had that in spades. Now, as far as what Direwolf Digital will do with it, I get the feeling they're going to just maintain it, because from what I've seen, Direwolf doesn't have all that much of a foothold when it comes to role-playing games. A lot of the stuff that they do is board gaming. And those are two different. Those are two different markets. And in fact, let me check something. Oh, Direwolf Digital. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at what they've got on BGG. So we see their top games. Let's go to see all. Let's see some stuff for Clank. A lot of stuff for Clank. Clank in Space. Clank Legacy. Um, Adventuring Party, Clank, 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 a lot of Clank. Um, Dune Imperium, which is a board is from 2020, with and then we have a expansion this year called Immortality. Uh, some expansions for that, um, Rise of Eeks. Um, the Eter the Eternal games, Oathbreaker. Uh, along with a along with a promo caro bo character board, Wild Tiled West. Yeah, there's a lot of. It's pretty much all board slash card games, not role playing games. And well, that was certainly the case with Fantasy Flight back in the day, where they were mostly a board and card game company that occasionally dabbled into role playing games mostly with the benefit of the D20 bubble. With Direwolf, I'm a little bit concerned if they're, if they're going to try and kill it off or try and introduce some board game elements, which would be really dumb, but it's dumb enough where I could believe that they could do that they try and do it. But we'll see how it we'll see how it plays out. I do like Cortex and I do want to at least do a review of Cortex Prime down the road. I just need to find the right materials so that I can do it. But, Direwolf, please don't fuck this up. Is that too much to ask? Anyway, stay frosty, everybody.